So we have this wall of cat photos in our living room. One day I was looking at it and thought, what if one of those cat's eyes followed you as you went through the room? I've never worked with animatronics before, but I thought this would be a really cool opportunity to try it out. I started researching animatronics online and came upon Will Cogley's videos. I went with his simple eye mechanism. I started researching Will's video and thinking about how would this fit into a piece of art. First thing that came to mind was we gotta like make some kind of box for this thing. I started sketching some ideas of how the frame would work, just figuring out like the depth, the size, and how I'd get all the electronics in the back. I came up with a simple list of wood and tools that I would need to make this work. We out here at Home Depot. It's freezing out here. For this project, I used white and black PLA filament to print the parts, six nine gram servo motors, some M3 and M2 screws. I just used these assorted packs. I think it's easier to just buy a bunch of these and have them on hand. The microcontroller is an Eligu Uno R3. I used an I2C servo driver board to control the motors and an assortment of jumper wires to control the animatronic eyes, I used a joystick, potentiometer, momentary switch, and 10K resistor. I had these as part of an LE Goose starter kit that I bought a while back. For the frame, all it took was a one by six by eight, a trim piece that was about an inch by an inch and a quarter and about 10 feet long, and a quarter inch piece of plywood that I got cut at Home Depot. I'll link all the parts in the description below. While I was waiting for the parts to come in the mail, I started 3D printing all of the parts needed for this. I printed almost all of these parts on a single plate on my Ender 3 Pro. Heads up, cutting wood by hand with a handsaw, especially a cheap one, is not fun. So don't recommend it. If you can get it cut at Home Depot or you have a friend or a neighbor that has a table saw and a miter saw, do that. I started by measuring and cutting the wood, then I moved on to priming the surface, while I was waiting on the paint to dry, I started working on the art. I knew that I wanted to be a cat, and I knew that I wanted to put the animatronic eyes right where the cat's eyes were, so that it lined up and it would look like the cat was looking around the room. I used Midjourney to come up with the art for this project. It only took a couple simple prompts, and I was really happy with the results, especially since they looked like my cat Nimbus. I knew that as long as the distance between the pupils on the art was the same as on the animatronic eyes, they should work. So what I did is I went in Photoshop, created a 16 by 20 canvas. I created a 75 millimeter line that represented the distance between the pupils. Then I put my art from mid journey into the Photoshop file, scaled it until the eye distance matched that line I made that was 75 millimeters apart. I wasn't 100% certain that this was going to work, but I thought it was worth a shot. So this is an adhesive poster I ordered from Walgreens. I'm going to peel the back and very carefully attach it to this plywood that I got cut today at Home Depot. It was the right distance, it was perfectly to scale, so shout out to Walgreens and also Photoshop, I guess. I was able to assemble the 3D model for the animatronic eyes in pretty much one sitting. It probably took me an hour and a half. This model does require that you work with some very fine parts and you may have to sand some things down or you may have to bore out some of the holes for the M3 and the M2 screws to make them fit well. After a bit of tinkering, you should be able to get it to where the eye mechanism works quite well. I sat down, wired this entire project by referencing the diagram. The diagram was a little bit hard for me to read personally, so I broke it down into parts to make it more consumable. I found a diagram specifically focusing on wiring up the joystick, and I just got the joystick working. I also did the same for the momentary switch, and I did the same for the potentiometer. And by the time I did all three of those, I had everything I needed. So then I was able to pull the code from Will Cogley's post on Instructables, map it to the right pins, so the right analog, the right digital pins, made sure everything was good to go. I ended up getting this thing working, which was awesome. It actually went fairly smoothly. I had a lot of fun controlling this thing with the joystick and the buttons. It's something I'd never done before. It was my first time playing with an animatronic and I certainly see myself doing this again in the future. So if you think of some cool animatronic projects, let me know in the comments and I'd be glad to check it out. To make the eyeballs look like cat eyes, we had to paint them, which was hard. I am not good at painting. My first iteration of the painted eyeballs ended up coming out like alien, lime green, 
strange eyeballs. Amber thought she could do better with the eyeballs, so I printed out a couple more and let her take a try at it. How's it going in here, little artist? Not going great so far. You have to do a good start. I have my inspiration photos. Her eyeballs came out a lot better than mine, but I feel like we still could have done a little bit better. Will Cogley's realistic eyeball videos are incredible. You should see this guy's work. It's amazing and mine do not look like that. Maybe one day I will try it again. The frame was starting to come together and it was getting closer to time to actually put the eyeballs through the art. It was terrifying to drill a hole into the poster considering that I only printed one. Probably should have printed more than one. I also had to make sure that they were perfectly in the right spot. So I measured 75 millimeters between the eyeballs and made a mark. Took the hole saw that I bought from the store and drilled into my poster and my frame and everything. It did tear up the poster a little bit. So in retrospect, I probably should have drilled the holes first and then added the poster later, but I don't know how to cut a clean circle in a poster. I'm not good at this stuff, so <laughs> please tell me a better way to do this. Now that it was time to figure out how the eyes go through the holes on the front of the art, I needed to come up with a mount. I noticed there were some screw holes in the bottom of the animatronic design, so I leveraged those. They just take M3 bolts. I was able to come up with a design in Tinkercad. I screwed up the first two. I was able to print the third and get it right. I'm so lucky that my Bamboo X1 Carbon printer came in the mail when it did. Because the X1 Carbon is so fast, I was able to iterate quickly and get a good mount done for this thing. So now it's time for the hot glue. Listen, you gotta use hot glue. I used the hot glue to attach the mount to the back of the poster, making sure that the eyes lined up just how I wanted them. Then I tidied up the cables a little bit and used hot glue to attach the Arduino Uno and the driver board to the back of the poster. If you've watched my other content, you know that powering things is not my forte. So I couldn't figure out how to get this USB battery power pack to power both the Arduino Uno and the servo driver board simultaneously. It has two outputs, but when I went to splice a USB cable and see if I could get it to power both, the spliced wires going to the servo driver board and then the normal USB cable going to the Arduino Uno. Don't do it, don't recommend it, didn't work. Battery won't power up. Every time I would plug them both into it, it would just, turn off the battery bank. I think there must be some kind of safety feature, short circuit detection, I don't know what it is, but the power bank will not let me do it. So I ended up just sticking a nine volt battery in the back just to get this thing done so we could see the cool effect because I was so excited to get this hung on the wall. I did a little test and it looked like this thing was gonna work. All right, come all the way in here. It's awesome. <laughs> it was time to move on to putting together an animatronic sequence. I created a very simple sequence where the eyes just look left and right and open and close. I did this by creating some custom functions in the Arduino IDE. I started on a few others that I would like to add. I just kept it simple for now. The final step was attaching the frame to the front of the poster. I did this with some super glue. I just used a couple dabs of super glue around the edges and was able to attach the art and the frame to the outside and it was done. Let's take a look at the demo and see how this thing looks. Overall, I think this thing looks pretty good, especially from a distance. It's kind of creepy, but also cool in its own way. I will say that uh, the detail work isn't great. So if you get up a little close, you can see my frame isn't quite straight and there's some spots where I had to touch it up. If you're just walking through the room, I think it gives off a pretty cool effect. This is what the back looks like when it's in operation. You can see the motors moving to push the animatronic eyes left and right and to open and close the eyelids. You can also see how I've mounted the Arduino Uno, the servo driver board, the nine volt battery and the USB battery pack. I would consider this a proof of concept at best, but I had a lot of fun doing it. I got to learn about animatronics. I got to learn about using servo driver boards. This was my first time using I2C. That was a really valuable skill that I can see myself using moving forward. If I could do this project again, I have a list of things that I would like to improve. Firstly, 
I would like to build a proper frame that's actually square. And I would like to use a table saw, a miter saw, and make sure that all my cuts are super clean, everything's nice and tidy. Spend more time sanding. Overall, just do better on the woodwork. It's kind of embarrassing how bad it is. <laughs> I would also be more careful about the way that I cut the eye holes and that I don't tear the poster. Making sure that I protect the poster and the art until the very end so that none of the process ends up harming the poster, the artwork itself. Another thing I would really like to improve is how realistic the eyeballs look. If you look at Will Cogley's realistic eyeballs, they're insane. These, on the other hand, are pretty rudimentary, but they got the job done and they look okay from a distance. As far as the electronics go, I would like to figure out how to power both the Arduino Uno and the servo driver board from a single USB battery pack. That way I can power both from a single power source that I can easily remove, recharge, and replace. I would love to add face tracking to this in the future, so maybe something like a Raspberry Pi with a small camera that could detect you walking through the room and follow your face. If you know how to do that or have ideas, drop them in the comments, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching my video. I really enjoy putting these projects together. The positive feedback and comments I get really help motivate me, especially when things aren't going the best because let's face it, when you're doing DIY projects, something is bound to go wrong and it does every time. You have to have grit and push through and whenever I read your comments, it really helps me stick it out. I've got a lot more cool things coming, so please like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next one. Peace.